In this video, I'm going to be going over how low energy radiotherapy units work. These are also known as KV or superficial units due to their low photon energy, which is in the kilo electron volt range, and the fact that they tend to deposit radiation dose mostly near the skin surface, which makes them ideal for treating superficial lesions like skin cancers. Most radiotherapy treatments in the modern age are carried out using photon beams generated electronically. These are usually produced using X ray tubes, which we're going to be covering in this tutorial, and linear accelerators, which we'll be covering later on. They both use the same method of photon beam production, which is to generate a high energy beam of electrons and slam it into a target material. Inside the target, the electrons undergo the Bremsstrahlung straling interaction, meaning that they lose energy in the form of photons as they interact with nuclei within the target. This process is incredibly inefficient. It does get less so as the incident electron beam energy increases, but generally only about 1% of the energy that you put into the target in the form of electrons will be released as useful photons. The rest is converted to heat. Kilovoltage radiotherapy units are quite similar to diagnostic x-ray tubes. They both rely on a general design that's been in use for about 100 years. We're going to be talking about the beam generating components of a tube, not the power source. Now these are contained within a vacuum sealed container. The whole purpose of this thing is to generate a beam of electrons to slam into a target. We get these electrons from the cathode, which is basically a word that means something that electrons come from. In this case, it's a wire through which we pass an electrical current, so a current of electrons. In order to get electrons out of the cathode, we heat it up basically to shake them free into the vacuum tube. This is known as thermoionic emission, which basically means heating something up in order to shake free charged particles. On the other side of the tube, we have the X-ray target, which we also call the anode, meaning something that electrons go to. In order to get the electrons from the cathode to the anode, we apply a voltage, or electrical field. Basically, we make the anode much more positive than the cathode in order to make electrons want to go there. The magnitude of the charge difference or the voltage that we put between the two determines how much energy the electrons get as they travel from the cathode to the target. If we apply a voltage of 300,000 volts between the two, the electrons will gain an energy of 300 kilo electron volts, since one electron volt is the energy that an electron gains when it's accelerated using one volt. This means that when the electron beam strikes the target and undergoes a Bernstrahlung interaction, it will produce a photon beam with a maximum energy of 300 keV. So we say that the beam has a KVP, or peak kilovoltage, of 300. This is because when an electron undergoes a Bremsstrahlung interaction, the maximum amount of energy that it can lose in the form of a photon is the maximum amount of energy it has. In this case, that would be 300 kilo electron volts. But it's far more likely that an electron won't lose all of its energy at once, and that it will produce a lower energy photon. So most of the beam will be made up of lower energy photons, which is why 300 is just the peak energy. The number of photons coming out of the tube will determine the dose rate. We can control this by controlling the current through the cathode, which if you've ever seen diagnostic x-ray equipment in use, this is the milliamp or MA setting. Increasing the current means more electrons passing through the cathode, which means more of them are being shaken out into the tube, accelerated towards the target, undergoing the Bremsstrahlung interaction of producing photons, which means more photons and therefore more dose. You'll have noticed that the photons in this picture leave the target at right angles to the incident electron beam. That's because at relatively low electron energies like these, the Bremsstrahlung interaction mostly produces photons in these directions. So the beam exit window is positioned at right angles to the electron beam's direction of travel. If we want to alter the energy of the photon beam, we can change the voltage, since this will change the maximum photon energy of the beam. But we normally do this in conjunction with beam filtration. We do this by passing the beam through a square of metal, usually aluminium or copper, positioned below the beam exit window. This removes lower energy components of the beam spectrum, increasing the average energy slightly, which is useful for treating anything that isn't the actual surface of the skin. When treating patients, we generally insert an applicator below the filter. It's normally a cone of metal which contacts the patient's skin, allowing the beam to be given a clinically useful shape with very sharply defined edges. It's important to shape low energy photon beams close to the patient's skin surface because low energy photons can be scattered in the air which results in them moving in directions other than that in which the beam is pointed, so therefore they tend to hit structures that aren't your target. X-ray tubes are relatively low energy. Practically speaking, they're good for producing X-ray beam energies up to about 300 kVp. They can go higher, but it's no longer practical given the other equipment we have available for high energy therapy. It's interesting to note that X-ray tube design is very similar to that of all cathode ray tube television sets which produce images by passing a thin electron beam rapidly across a fluorescent screen which causes it to light up. The electrons undergo Bremsstrahlung interactions in the screen and produce very low energy photons with energies in the order of 30 to 40 keV. So old televisions did actually shoot x-rays at your face, but because they're such low energy, the vast majority were absorbed by leaded glass screens. This is something that examiners love, 
and it's also very useful to know about clinically. Because the photon beam is produced at right angles to the incident electron beam, some parts of the beam have to pass through more of the target in order to escape than others. This means that some parts of the beam will be attenuated more as they escape from the X-ray tube. The cathode can also be called an electron gun, because it shoots electrons towards the target. Attenuation is greater on the end of the beam that's closer to the target than it is on the end that's closest to the gun. If we draw a graph of radiation dose versus distance across the beam, which we call a dose profile, it looks like this, with a slightly lower dose on the target side of the beam. This is called the heel effect, and it's due to attenuation within the target. 